Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to discuss the consequences of voting with your feet. So this video comes as Tennesseans are now having to grit through another um, potential onslaught against our freedoms. And that's a special session that our governor has called to address gun control issues. And how this dovetails directly into the consequences of voting with one's feet is that we've had a lot of people move in here from out of state over the past few years and this is part of the consequences of it having to deal with more onslaughts against your freedom that really are coming from representatives who are who are representing their constituents many of whom are not from here and who have not checked their politics at the door and so this video really is addressing an issue that is systemic and that is affecting many states and many areas, not just specific states, but also rural areas inside states that are being affected by the overflow from the cities. So the consequences of voting with one's feet. I want to discuss in this video not only the political consequences, but also the financial consequences of people moving to the degree that they are and really evaluate where this came from. So first off, People in previous times did not have the mobility capability that they have now. In order to get to this nation on the Mayflower, you had to withstand weeks of uncertainty. It took courage to cross the seas. And so essentially through each permutation, as travel has gotten easier and easier, more and more people have floated in, not only, of course, to the United States, but also to different areas within it. And so as we've seen over the past several decades, more and more people move around more frequently. But what's happened in recent years is because of the invasion from our southern border and from leftist policies espoused in bastions of liberalism up north and also on the left coast, west coast, places that were livable are now becoming unlivable. And in many cases, people are looking around and saying, well, my dollar doesn't really buy very much here in the California housing market or the New York and New Jersey housing market. And so I'm, you know, as a, a person who looks around and sees these things, it could be easily you know, concluded, wow, well, I should move somewhere else. So the bottom line that a lot of people look at is, of course, taxes. And so when they look at low state income tax or no state income tax, is it any wonder that the areas that have seen the most growth overall over the past 10 years have been, that's right, areas with no state income tax, that is Florida and Texas and Tennessee and then Montana, but then also Idaho. And I'm not sure, I don't think those have, uh, those. I'm not sure what the income tax specifics are with those states, but they're lower income tax certainly than what's in California. So when you look at the consequence of people leaving their homes to try and save money, many people are doing this from a freedom standpoint, but a lot of people are just doing it from a pocket standpoint. And they don't understand that their own votes previously were the reason why they can't afford their current circumstances. So of course they wanna evac and flee, but do you think they check their politics at the door? They're not. And definitely in Tennessee, we're seeing the effects of this because as our governor has called a special session of our state legislature to deal with gun control, which I thought we didn't have to worry about that in the great state of Tennessee. Wrong. Over the past several years, people have come from all over, including from California and New York and Chicago, and moved into Nashville and surrounding areas. We call it Trashville for those of you who aren't from Tennessee. If you're not from Nashville, then you call it Trashville. That's just how it is. So as people have moved in, they have not checked their politics. But as a secondary level, forget the politics side of things. Another consequence of voting with the feet is the monetary side of things and the cost of living side of things. When everybody takes advantage of a great deal, no one can take advantage of that great deal. And so that's what we're seeing now. So many people have moved, over 85,000, I think. Sorry, y'all, I'm getting eat up by bugs out here. You wanna move to Tennessee? Hope you're okay with bugs because we're surrounded by them. Oh, did I mention we're surrounded by firearms too? Lots of them. Did I mention we're surrounded by uh, nepotism and cronyism and lots of dark money moving through the legislature? I didn't mention that. Well, you should probably know that too. Did I mention we're surrounded by methed out people everywhere and um, narcs out the wazoo? Yep, that's a problem here too. But anyway, <laughs> let's talk about the housing market. So in the housing market sense, you could say like, oh, well, you know, I'm conservative or like the people who are moving in next to me, like, oh, they're conservative. Here's the issue, right? As, as welcoming as people want to be, what do you think happens when out-of-state money comes and pays over asking price, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 over asking price, bids things up? What do you suppose happens to the property owners in that surrounding area? Their taxes get raised. 
Nice having that conservative neighbor next door, but if they pay $300,000 more for their house than what it's worth, you have to pay for that as the native. You have to pay for that as the property owner. So a lot of places are dealing, particularly in Idaho, are dealing with issues right now like straight up gentrification, which is a darling phrase the left likes to use, but essentially what happens is a native local populace is displaced because of development in the area. And the thing is, right, if you have people who have spent their entire life in an area, worked honestly, saved in accordance you know, with their means, lived within their means, they're only able to save and store according to what they're paid in that area. So someone who's grown up in Tennessee or Texas, they can't compete with California and New York money. So we're seeing now that people who have grown up in areas are being forced out because their rents are being doubled. Okay, so let's say that they could, that there is no housing for them because it's either been bought up by Airbnbs because you know people like to visit these areas, you see, or that it's being bought up by out-of-state buyers or cash buyers. And no, it's not all BlackRock. No, it's not all these investment firms. It's a lot of people that are moving and that are picking up stakes, right? It's easy to blame the big corporations. It's easy to do this, but to look at the real functional reality one has to pay attention and talk to people and a lot of people are picking up and moving so when they do it affects not just property taxes it affects rentals as well and the native populace is displaced idaho is dealing with this in certain municipalities by effectively blocking developers um, not issuing permits for creation of subdivisions etc because the prices are just unaffordable for local people and this is a key issue state and local governments governances are having to take up the issue of who do we serve first? Out-of-state buyers, out-of-state non-local people, or our locals? Who do we take care of first? Local government has a fiduciary responsibility to safeguard the rights of the locals, not people from out of town, the locals. So here's the next permutation of this. We are going to return, I submit to you, to a pre-war between the states, also known as Civil War mindset on this. Regionalism as a mindset. Frankly, I think this is a good thing. When people are confronted, and I find this particularly, sorry, particularly who live in leftist areas, when they're confronted with the reality that their relocation is causing direct net harm to the locals that they're relocating to, they don't like it very much because, oh, this is one great united country and one united states and we're all the same. No, we're not. And the founding fathers knew that. As a matter of fact, the Anti-Federals spoke specifically about the varied ways that the people in the United States, meaning the colonies at that time, the varied ways that people made their living, the different peoples that represented and that no one central government could possibly adequately represent the rights and, and, and liberties of them all, and that ultimately it would become destructive to it. So one of the things that you'll hear people say is that we're like, oh, one united country. We may be united in in functionality as an empire, but we're not united as a culture. Not at all. You, when you consider the differences and the variances that people have state to state, there's a reason why people from Idaho don't like people from Southern California. There's a reason why people from the South don't like people from New York and New Jersey in general. Oh, you could say that's passe. Is it? Is it when people who are moving in are causing direct harm? Is it when people who are moving in are driving up property taxes? Is it when people who are moving in are causing changes fundamentally in the voting aggregate, which ultimately result in special sessions for gun control legislation for one of the quote unquote supposed free states, right? Tennessee, by the way, is a huge misnomer. We are not a constitutional um, carry state, not at all. If you wanna know why we're not a constitutional carry state, you should look at the NRA and their advocacy slash their legislative lobbying because they are one of the big reasons why we didn't get that bill passed. So just an FYI on that. So where is this all going to? This is going ultimately to a return of the pre-war between the states mindset, wherein people considered themselves primarily citizens of the state in which they resided, the state. Robert E. Lee talked about himself as a Virginian. You see this over and over again, that people identified themselves primarily as part of their town and as part of their state, not one giant regional landmass. And I know that may sound like slightly unpatriotic, but it's not, it's history. When did the whole idea of we're one united nation, everybody together, that came around when they need bodies for the meat grinder of Europe prior to World War I. Look it up, look it up. Um, when people, feel like their backs are against the wall, they're going to feel like they ain't got nothing to lose, culminating ultimately in what you saw this week in Pittsburgh. Now, of course, the situation there is still being uncovered. 
functionally, as it sits right now, perhaps y'all have more information on this than I do, there was a gentleman who was in the process of being evicted from his home and being served eviction papers, and he got into a shootout with the police and shot down a couple of their drones and basically was like, I'm not getting dragged out of my house. I ain't got nothing to lose. If y'all want to come get me, come and get me and eat it all the way up to the front porch. And that's what happened. So I'm not making a value judgment on this. I'm just saying when people feel like they have nowhere to go because their homes are getting invaded and their rents are getting raised and they can't pay their property taxes, you're going to see things devolve and you're going to see regionalism and tension between outsiders and natives come to a head. Uh, probably in not pretty ways, but ultimately I think we're seeing a loss of confidence, certainly in the federal government. I, the overall viewing of the the Republican debate last night was ridiculously low, particularly the people that I've talked to. I mean, I haven't seen the overall polls of it, but do we even really trust them at this point anyway? No. Confidence in the federal government and in the electoral process for the federal government is at an all-time low. People don't want to participate anymore because they don't have confidence that their vote's going to matter. Why should they? Wouldn't they be better suited to pay attention and put their energies locally? And that's what's going to happen. I do see this. And this is the thing the left gets really right, guys. This is one of the reasons why they're so strong at organizing, because they understand grassroots activism. They do it better than we do by far, by far. Um, in the future, I see that more and more people are going to be focusing on their local school, school districts, the local county commissions, and definitely the local tax assessors. If your taxes are being raised, you need to show up at town hall and hold your tax assessor's feet to the fire. Because unless you're getting a corresponding raise in value of services, that's extortion. <laughs> so, um, and really when you think about it, do you really own anything anymore? If the state can levy taxes against you and take away property that you hold free and clear, do you really own it? The answer is no. So if you don't really own it, and they're just going to keep bilking you out of money anyway, Anyway, wouldn't you rather just be um, non-compliant? A lot of people are seeing this to the tune of, of sharing the Richmond North of Richmond video, the Anthony Oliver, Oliver Anthony, sorry, the, sharing this video, you know, millions of times, 37 million views the last time I checked. People are at their wits end. So what do we do in the midst of all this? The consequences of voting with your feet? Well, you can obviously get together with people locally. Um, I feel like I've said this so many times, but it bears saying again, folks, the practicalities and the functionalities, even though they're not glitzy and they're not sexy, that ultimately is what safeguards your peace of mind and also your standard of living and your quality of living. When you can meet your needs, beans, bullets, and band-aids wise, without the government, without handouts, you're free. Whether you are a property owner or not, I mean, does that really mean anything? Let's call it what it is. Whether you are a property uh, lease, lessee, leaseor, whether you're leasing your property from the government or not, if you have the ability to feed yourself, if you have the ability to defend yourself, and you have the ability to take care of your own health care needs at home, then you're ahead of the power curve, right? Health care is becoming more and more expensive. Food's becoming more and more expensive. Housing, forget it. It's more unaffordable now than really it ever has been. When you consider that it takes on average, what is it, 49% of take-home pay for the median income for a median household purchase. This thing's about to break, y'all. Um, and guess who did it to us? Our own government and the people who participated and elected these people and also the Federal Reserve, a non-elected central bank who just keep printing our money into nothingness. Now, these people, exactly what the song said, the Richmond North of Richmond, these people did this to us. And the question is, you know, to what degree do we tolerate it? How do we make sense of it and how do we time ourselves? How do we position ourselves for, um, for success in this? If you cover your bases on this, that is going to set you up for the most success possible and give you options. I'm all about options, y'all. Um, I'm not, not about having to go to people for um, entering into grids and paying lots of money and be, being extorted and having to give my rights away and calling that freedom. That ain't freedom. We are the least free now. There's no question. Like This, this country is paling in what the... Forget, forget the vision of the Founding Fathers. This is paling in comparison to even five years ago, right? But we endure not because it's comfortable not because it's the ideal not because we have any hope that the good old days are going to return they are not i'm here to tell you they're not if you're a baby boomer those days are gone they are gone the happy childhood and the relative prosperity if you are a baby boomer and even in a later gen xer if you experience the prosperity of being able to own your own home with one job those days are probably gone and we are in the middle of a depression. So when you look at 
success strategies. You look at people who weathered the depression well, and my papa, God rest his soul, he made a point, and actually I'll try and put a link to this video up here, the Great Depression Lessons from Papaw. He made the point, you didn't have to have a huge farm, but even a garden, even if it's one tomato plant, even if it's just like kale that you spread over scrap area on the ground, that gives you actionable options over your circumstances. Plant something, plant something. It'll get you closer to the Lord, that's for sure, because when you realize that you eat from the Lord's hand, it's a comforting thing in the midst of all this. It don't make it right, and it doesn't make what we're experiencing any less traumatic for people. But there's no other option, right, than to hold on to your faith. Faith is not pacifism, by the way. Uh, I don't subscribe to the belief that somehow belief in God and reading of the scriptures makes you have to give up uh, your ability to defend yourself and stand up for what's right. God, I'm glad our founding fathers didn't believe that. <laughs> you get that every now and then for people who are like, you're like, oh, like we should like keep turning the other cheek. It's like, mm, do you turn the other cheek against tyranny? Do you turn the other cheek against murderers and child molesters? No, no, you don't. There's justice because God said justice, justice shall you seek, right? That's a big one too. So like people who, who play the selective games in the scriptures always crack me up on things. But the faith is the faith aspect is the only part of what's going to get us through this because we're fixing to have a reboot fully in this system. And I don't know what that's going to look like, but I know that the consequences of voting with the feet, of people moving, have both positive consequences and very negative consequences. There's going to be more turmoil because more people are moving in a more rapid um, and ultimately a more exponential way than they ever have before because technology has facilitated this. As people move, as information moves, as, as the fundamentals of the economy are swinging back and forth, we're setting ourselves up for major, major change and probably war. I would say there's a very, very high likelihood by 2025 we're going to be at war with China, um, possibly a little bit later than that, but they've got very few options left than to try and to unite everybody in the midst of everything and to scare everybody into compliance. That's all they got left. So consequences of voting with your feet, at least you can be in a good place, but it's not as easy as people think. Escaping to a quote unquote free state is not the solution. Cause I'm gonna tell you, a lot of the reasons why people escape to Tennessee in particular is that they've been told, oh, it's so cheap to live here. It ain't cheap to live here anymore, guys. Nope. <coughs> it's kind of a, uh, when the average house price has increased by, what is it, $100,000 on average, and like they're 50% overpriced, <coughs> okay, that's great if you're coming from California, New York, and you don't care. But if you're native here, um, your wages have not raised correspondingly to these houses, so saving on state income tax really doesn't help you if you can't afford, afford to put a roof over your head. This is real stuff and not solutions that are fixed just by people moving and then voting and participating in the process. This is fundamental stuff that's gonna to have to be reset. I don't have an answer for you on this, but I do know that if you check off the bases, the beans, bolts, and band-aids, and you hold on to the Lord and ask, ask the Lord what he would have you do in your situation, right? I'm not a big believer in, in YouTube gurus telling everybody what to do about everything. <laughs> it's like, no, like God knows what you should do for your circumstance. I, don't, like, I can give you advice on basics. I can give you advice on fundamentals. But here's the thing. The masters are the ones who have fundamentals, repetition on demand, right? So beware of people who would soothsay and give you these perfect solutions, right, for blanket you know, problems. Unless it has to deal directly with fundamentals, I'd be wary of that. Just ask the Lord what you should do. God's got a thousand solutions for every problem. Let him who lacks wisdom ask of God, who giveth to all men generously without reproach. That's a good verse. I like that verse. It's a good one. You know why? Because it doesn't say that God gives only to people who have their theology, quote unquote, straightened out. Only to people who believe a certain way. Only to people who are perfect in all their ways. No. All men generously. Doesn't matter if you've got all your ducks in a row. If you ask for wisdom, just like Solomon did, it says in Proverbs too, like the fear of the Lord is beginning knowledge and wisdom. You ask the Lord for wisdom in your circumstances, he'll tell you what to do. Maybe you should move to a free state. Maybe you should move to a more rural area within your own. Maybe there's other options for you. I don't think that mass relocation into one or two states or five states is going to fix this issue because these states themselves, we cannot handle. Our infrastructure is, is falling apart because so many people have moved in here so quickly. And guess what happens when you have a bunch of people moving to a place? It's increase in crime, increase in accidents, increase in a whole bunch of other stuff that you probably weren't banking on seeing when you came to your dream escape, right? 
Consequences of voting with your feet, they are far, they are wide, and they are varied. But hopefully, Lord willing, ask the Lord and he'll show you what to do in your circumstance. I hope the video was helpful for you all today. If you enjoyed it, I hope you subscribed me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also support me and stay with me on Patreon, subscribe, Star Cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I got links below. Like I said, friends, I would really appreciate your prayers. I'm dealing with a lot of pain and I am rehabbing, attempting to rehab from this latest car crash. That was not my fault. Um, and unfortunately, just because of some of the circumstances surrounding it, I can't give you updates, right? Like, are you feeling better or what I'm, I can't, I can't tell you that. I am asking for prayers because I need them. Um, and it's really, it's thrown off a lot. So, if you'd pray for me, I would appreciate it. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be alive. Thanks, y'all. Have a blessed weekend. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.